everyone. First of all, I apologize for the delay. I tested my hardware and software last night before I went to bed, and this morning after breakfast before packing it all up. So of course, as soon as I plugged it in here, um, it refused to work as it normally does. Um, and that's what you get for not just doing live demonstrations or demon worse dem live demonstrations with hardware, but live demonstrations with home-built hardware that's held together with rubber bands. Um, so I think the actual problem is my MacBook, that the networking between the MacBook and the Raspberry Pi is, is not working uh, as it should. It should. You should be able to connect them via a USB cable, and the Raspberry Pi will go into a certain mode and will be available to the, um, uh, to the, well, in this case, to a MacBook that's, as well as providing power, is also connecting to it uh, with uh, a network connection. So this means I'm going to have to do a bit of swapping, typing on an unfamiliar keyboard. There might still be a problem with the Pi, and so we might have some other troubles as well, but I, I feel you're probably on my side rather than against me. Not like that keynote speaker yesterday where some people were rather unkind. So this is me. I, I'm Daniele. Um, that's what I look like on television. Um, as you can see, I'm Python software. Uh, that's, uh, uh, um, I work at... I t can we turn the volume down a little bit? Because I'm getting it rather loud in my ear. Thank you. Um, I work at DVO. We have a web uh, cloud hosting platform um, built in Python and Django and for Python and Django developers. But we also host other things. So please come and talk to me if you want to talk about Docker or uh, Django or deployment or any of those things. Um, I'm a core developer of the... Django project itself, and an ex-vice president of the Django Software Foundation, which is not really actually as grand as it sounds, although. Uh, I go to a lot of these events. Um, it's part of my job, so I'm really fortunate to have a job in which I go to events all over the place. I love going to these events. I love meeting people. Um, and what happens at these events is this kind of valuable, friendly magic of Europythons and PyCons. And after all these conferences, I still enjoy coming to them. But this magic works hardest on the people who are new to their careers or to Python or to programming, or even in places where Python and programming are quite new as industries. So for the people who aren't yet confident, who aren't yet sure whether this is for them, who aren't sure of their future success, there's something really brilliant going on in these events. And I see it particularly in my um, African travel. So I'm amazingly fortunate to be able to do some of these things as part of my job. I've been involved in Python Namibia since 2015. We've held five editions. And from that have come several others. There's also uh, a regular PyCon in South Africa, but that um, uh, can run under its own steam. So we've got, as I, if you saw yesterday in the Lightning Talks, I mentioned that we're holding PyCon Africa in August uh, this year. Uh, these are some of my friends from Namibia, the organizing part of the organizing team of uh, PyCon Namibia. Uh, there's PyCon Africa. If you want to know about that, come and talk to me. And as I mentioned, we have opened a fundraising campaign just to try and get a little bit more money into our financial assistance program. You can, f well, you probably know where to find me here, but you can also find me online. So, um, when I go to um, conferences, for example, in Namibia, um, one of the things people are, in people are interested in is robotics. And there are all kinds of robotics projects you can do with Python. You can find out a lot of information about them. And um, they look really good, but they, they all seem to involve things like 3D printers and laser cutters and hack spaces and university lo laboratories and so on. And most people um, don't have that kind of thing. So I wondered if I could build a, a pen plotter. This is an axial pen plotter where the pens move on, on two axes. So the challenge that I set myself was, what is the cheapest and simplest pen plotter that could possibly be made? Well, um, 
you'll ha I've got a camera here, so I can also show you some more video. But uh, here it is. Here's the, one of the first iterations of it. Um, what can you see there? You can see uh, it uses a ballpoint pen for the drawing in the hinges. It uses the part of the tube of a ballpoint pen. Um, and those are some wooden sticks I found. Here's another version. Um, I, I found it's a good way to uh, get your talks accepted at a conference if you, you know, flatter them by printing out their logo with your robot. Um, those are some rather nice servos that I blew up, so I don't have those. Um, this is how the pen lifts up and down. You can see there's a, it uses the arm of the servo to do that. Um, I had to call in to uh, pl play all, all my um, high school mathematics, which is from a very long time ago, because I'm probably older than you think I am. And uh, so um, I had to relearn a certain amount of trigonometry. And this is how it, how it works. Um, it's a pantograph, which is the same kind of mechanism that's used on a tram to lift the, not on a tram, on a train to lift the uh, uh, connector up to the, to the wires. So we have two motors at the top that, that rotate, and there are two, there's a yellow and red driving arm, and a green and a blue following arm. So it forms a pentagon, there are, there are five sides because you've got to account for the space between the two motors. So two motors, four arms, five sides, and then when you're doing the maths for this, after a while the whole world seems to be composed of triangles, it's remarkable. Um, and this is the mathematics, you don't need to worry too much about that. Because this is intended as an educational thing, it's actually broken down as much as I could possibly um, break it down. So you can see that as long as you're able to break down a shape into triangles, you can do this with fairly simple trigonometry. So the, the bill of materials, this is crucial because, um, say, a Namibian student does not have uh, a 3D printer or something like that that was bought on a whim. The total bill of materials, a Raspberry Pi Zero for $5, three servo motors for uh, about $3 each, some stiff card, uh, some wood glue, which you need to buy, and a ballpoint pen, which you can probably steal from somewhere. Um, and then the tools are very simple. You need something to make some holes with. Uh, you need a knife to cut the card, a small screwdriver, um, a first aid kit, and um, to avoid getting into domestic trouble, then I recommend having a damp cloth to wipe wood glue off the table when you finish, because it saves, it, it helps. So there's a, a very incomplete, in-progress uh, GitHub repository for uh, the code that I've written uh, for this. I'll, I'll show it again afterwards, but it, it is very incomplete, and I'm not doing a very good job at updating it. Right, so, um, they're doing an update, you can go away. Um, that was the, the slides part. Now I want to show you what the machine looks like. So if I switch over to this, and with this magic camera, with a delay, apparently. Or maybe not a delay. Maybe it's not working at all. Um, now that Martin came and showed us how to set this up and get it going, I'm going to just, oh. Well, that is quite a delay. Oh, no, there we are. I think that's. So, you can't see it. Why can't you see it? Because um, I've got to do that. Yes, okay. So, this is really difficult with a delay. Um, can I make this full screen? Well, probably I can make it full screen, but you know I'm I'm pushing my luck here with uh, hardware and software. So, this is the um, uh, this is the pantograph. So we've got hell's bells. There really is a delay there. Maybe it, it seems to stop. Okay. Well, you can see that. So you can see the two motors and the four arms. You can see a weight on top of the. Um, of the pen to hold it down because it needs a bit of pressure to keep it uh, drawing on the paper. Um, and uh, there's the, well, this is not actually tremendously useful now that it's stopped doing that. What is going on? Um, I'm going to just try that again. So um, I need to open a, no. 
open capture device, that's it. And I assume I need to. Yeah. Okay, this is not the most terribly reliable thing. Um, oh, there we are. <laughs> So what we have here are the, the, the two motors. We have a, uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, all the software is running on that. I've got a little wiring loom that I soldered together to make it easier. And here is the, and it stopped again. No. And, and there is the, the, the um, control for the pen. So let me just leave that there. Ben, could I have a helper, please, with the camera? I'm going to try doing some. Oh, now, this is going to be really difficult because um, I'm going to be typing blind into a terminal because I, we had that hardware issue. So um, I'm just going to show you the uh, plot of moving its um, uh, pen up and down, uh, pg.pen.down. Uh, ah. Now, for the gentleman who lent me this keyboard, can you show me where the brackets are, please? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, curly, uh, what do you call them, braces? Uh, Curlies? Or the not parentheses? Parentheses, oh, parentheses. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Your keyboard, yeah, so this is, this is new to me. So, yeah. You have to hold shift. Shift, yes. Good. You, you open that and close them. No, I didn't even close it, not you. There you go. Okay, so if I've done the right thing, oh, there you are. Did you see the pen? Oh, you haven't seen the, the pen has moved, but the video hasn't. Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay, okay, so good. And I can do pg for pantograph dot pen dot up. And can you show me again with this? Shift. Shift. Shift function and see it's on the end. Shift, fu oh my goodness, okay, like so. Yeah, there you go. yeah, and that will. I mistyped something there, so let's try, uh, pg dot pen. Do you know what's going to. Mm, oh, well, then we can't have both, can we? Uh, Yes, my God. <laughs> um, in, in the 1970s, there was a terrible uh, air crash when uh, engine number two of a DC-10 exploded and se severed a number of the hydraulic lines. And the only way they had left, they discovered a new way to fly a DC-10, which was through asymmetric thrust of the, remain of the two engines they could control because they could barely control anything else. And the captain called in other pilots who happened to be on the plane. And there was a team of them in the cockpit. And they basically invented a new way of flying. So he stepped back from the controls completely. And they managed to land the plane at Sioux City. You probably have heard of this terrible accident. At the very last moment, there was a downdraft or a gust of wind, and the plane actually somersaulted. But they saved most of the lives of the people on that plane. So this is not as, uh, as heroic, but uh, I'm very grateful that we've got some pilots on, on board. So uh, PG, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, um, uh, do pg.pen.up, and then the parentheses. Oh, there you are. OK. Now, wait. So I'm, I'm going to switch back to this here. And um, I'm going to show you how, how it, how, Ben, perhaps you can um, sh sh shine the camera on one of those. So you can paint, draw little pictures like, like so. Oh, I've got them on, on here. I can show you what, what, they, what they look like, and you can come around and have a look. Any minute, I'll, be on the Any minute I'll now be on the screen, yeah. So there you are. So this is, this is the kind of output we can get. Oh, it makes me look like a narcissist that is pictures of me. Do, do this picture instead. There you are. So there's a little boy holding a, a teddy bear or a, a rabbit. Um, as you can see, it's a very accurate pen plotter, but I think it has a kind of charm through its wiggly lines. Um, now, it's a little bit, uh, you have to understand, to draw a straight line with an axial plotter is very easy. You just move the pen down one of the axes. On this, the only movement that I have is, is rotation. So. If my point, my xy point is over here and my, the end of my line is over there, another xy point, I want to draw a straight line between them. But if I make the motors go from the position they need to be at for that point to the position they need to be at for that point, what I'll get is not a straight line, but I'll get a curve. 
because the motion of the motors is rotary. So every line I get, I have to break it down into lots of small pieces. Um, so I, I break it down into tenths of one tenth of a millimeter, you know, as if I'm going to make that kind of accuracy. But that's what I do. So every line has to be broken into many, many smaller lines so that we can um, get a straight line. And so. Um, with a little bit of confusion here because um, everything is in the wrong place due to the little panic I had earlier. So I adapted um, uh, a library that I found. Let me make this. A library that I found called Line Draw that vectorizes bitmaps. And I adapted it to give me some JSON output that I can feed into the plotter. So for example, this morning, I, just before I came into the building, I took this photograph. And um, line draw, I'm going to run it on my Mac. I could run it on the Raspberry Pi, um, but the reason that I don't is that it uses uh, NumPy and OpenCV. So although it does work, it is rather slow. So am I in the, no, I'm not in the right directory. Where am I? Uh, C line draw dot Mac. Um, Need to make it a little bit bigger. Um, import line draw. Don't, oh, thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but don't go too far. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what I've got, I've got um, that crane image, and I'm going to do line. Or I've probably got, uh, there you are. Um, so um, I'm going to take some input. Can you see that well enough, I hope? Yeah. Um, there's the crane JPEG. I'm going to put it out as uh, JSON. I'm not going to draw hatches. I'm not going to fill in the image. It makes it faster. And I'm going to simplify the contours. So I'll show you. If, if I make this, if I simplify the. Oh, of course, no. See, I'm such a bad programmer. I always do it from him. I always do that because I like it. So um, I'm going to simplify the contours a lot. So it only makes 28 strokes for the whole thing, and that's going to be looking like that. Okay, that's the rendition of that. But um, if I did it without any simplification, it would take quite a long time. But I was experimenting earlier, and 1.5 will do it reasonably quickly and give me a reasonably uh, accurate output. So uh, has it finished yet? There you are. So that's what I'm going to send to the plotter. And um, that is just some JSON. As you can see, it looks exactly like the crane, doesn't it? Um, so um, I've, earlier, I sent that over to the um, Raspberry Pi. And I think we'll head over. Mm. You're good at typing, aren't you? And so I've got to be. I've got to remember now. Um, uh, it's. Um, yeah, yes. Let's let's switch this. To, let's do this. That's probably better. And then we can always switch back to the camera afterwards. Okay. So, um, actually, if you just go up, that will be. Here's one I made earlier. Uh, if it's remembered the command. I was experimenting with some stuff. There we are. Just can you, instead of, no, don't make it plot me. Make it plot the crane.json, please. OK? And now, yeah, go ahead. Hit fire. Oh. Uh, um, OK, can you exit from there? Let's have a look at the, um, uh, you are, we're in the right place. No there is no crane there. OK, that's, OK. Uh, never mind, we'll, we'll print another image instead. Um, let's, um, OK, go back into Python. And can you do from pantograph, uh, sorry, from, oh, god. Yeah. Um, 
I think three. Okay. Let, I'll tell you what, let's go find the from PG star. Um, I wanted to show you some of the calibration routines so that it makes this more accurate, but never mind that for now. We'll have to do something else. Let's plot um, my little nephew, Oscar. So he was, um, where's the... Okay, okay, let's, let's, let's do it. Okay, let's, uh, so pg.plot underscore file. Uh, no, uh, yes, correct, sorry, correct, sorry. Um, yeah. um, parentheses, um, quotes, and other quotes, yep. And it's ep19.json. And this is the logo of EuroPython. Let's try that, okay. I will, but let's, let's just let's get, let this go so we can see. It's going to take a while, go ahead, yeah. Great, so you can see it's... Yeah, I, I'm going to. Um, so you can see it's what is it's looping all, the, all all over the lines in that JSON. Um, now you'll get the delayed action over here. I think this is what they use on live broadcasts when they think somebody might do something obscene in the audience. So they've got three seconds in which to. Uh, uh, we need the camera, don't we? And don't worry, I'm going to start that again. We're not having too much luck with the camera, um, Martin. Would you know? Do you th Sorry, we're trying to get the video, but it's it's very laggy. This is see, there's another pilot coming to to help us. This is. Uh, 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 we have, uh, I, might just, I might just use my Windows computer. Go ahead. Yes. See. Okay. Um, yep. Okay. And would it show live? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's get a better angle. Let's let's make that that bigger. So, C can you get a better angle, Ben, so that we can see? And uh, uh, more ah, now what I normally have to do, uh, it's drawing. Normally I, I I rub the pen a little bit to prime it, but you can see that it's. Let's, let's, I'll, I'll, I'll take charge. Of this. So, it's not very fast, um, but it does plot. As you can see, it's tracing out its wiggly line. Let's see if we can uh, capture it from there. And um, it's drawing a long line right now. And the moment you see the pen is in the down position. When it's finished this line, um, that servo will twitch and will lift the pen. Oops. There you are. This is going up and down. Can you see that well enough from where you're sitting? Yeah. So. It's pretty simple. I mean, that's really the whole of it. And I'm kind of running out of time now. So um, I, I think we've, thank you very much. We've landed, thank you, Mark. We've landed safely. Um, uh, by all means, c come and have a look at this afterwards. And maybe you've got some ideas about how to make um, MacBooks and Raspberry Pis talk more reliably when they're at conferences and not just before breakfast. Um, I can probably leave this there, so it's, it's still uh, still drawing. Um, I just want to quickly go back and uh, finish off here. So I'm always it's a work in progress. I want to make this uh, better. I've got another design now, which I think will be much simpler. And this is going to instead of having a pantograph, we'll just have two arms, still the same number of motors, one, two, and three. This will have um, better reach. I think it will be simpler to make. I think it will um, have more mechanical advantage on the motors. So I think I'll get better results from this, but I haven't actually written the mathematics to, uh, to drive that. So that's, and I think it will be simpler, which is the important thing, because for me, the, I don't mind that the lines are all quite wiggly on this. I think it's just part of the charm. So I don't want to make it more precise. I want to make it better, which means I want to make it simpler and cheaper and easier to build and reproduce. Because somebody who doesn't have success with it first time is going to give up. So I want to be able to make a, a kit or a set of instructions that almost anybody can uh, do something uh, with this. So I'm going to be sprinting on that perhaps on, on Saturday. Uh, another reminder, reminder of that, please take a look. I'd be very grateful and talk to me. Thank you very much. I don't know if we have time for questions, but I think we just about made it. We do have time for questions. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh.
Thank you, Daniela. I think we can let, let it plot while we have questions and answers. So if you have a question, would you mind uh, getting to your microphone? Um, ben, could I ask you to hold the camera again so while, it, while it's drawing? So I can't think and hold the camera at the same time. Yeah. Could you make it a few feet wide, or would that be... Uh, you, you definitely could. You just need motors powerful enough to, to do that. And um, I did have some larger motors that were, could draw bigger and were more accurate. Ironically, I found that the cheapest motors... Sorry, the volume's rather loud for me again. Danuka, could you turn it down a bit for me, please? Um, if you use digital servo motors, which are faster and stronger and more accurate, you just get lots of oscillations because they're trying to constantly correct. So this has got lots of dead spots in the movement, and that actually absorbs um, many of the problems that I had with digital motors. So cheaper actually work better. But with a powerful motor, with um, rigid materials, yes, of course it could be scaled up. Um, I wasted a huge amount of time trying to make those better servos work, but I never, in the end, the, the cheap ones worked best. Yeah. If you please come and have, I mean, if we've got a few minutes and uh, there are no more questions, please come and crowd around and have a look at it actually working because it, you'll get a much better sense of it when you're standing in front of it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's, and if you think of any questions, go ahead. Yeah, yeah so let, let's close the session. Th thanks, Daniela. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you all. And thank you for your patience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>